Good morning and welcome to the first episode of this new tutorial series. Today we're just going to take a bit of time to do a full overview of the whole project and I'm going to show you what we're going to do during the whole series. But first I wanted to say that this series is going to be accessible for pretty much everybody. I'm going to start really slowly, I'm going to explain you everything in detail and then we're going to pick up the pace because we have a lot of stuff to see. So let's get to it. I'm going to open my debug map. So here we go, this is my basic level. For now, there's a bunch of stuff here, but we're gonna start from scratch with absolutely nothing and we're gonna build all that together. Uh, first of all, we have the camera movements and settings. So my camera here, we can move forward and backward, left and right. Uh, we can zoom out and zoom back in. And we can also rotate in case a unit hides behind an object or anything. Once we're done with the camera movement, we're going to go to the grid. Uh, right now, my grid is uh, mapped to my environment, but I'm just going to remove all that. Okay. So this is a basic square grid. We can also use an hexagon grid or a triangle grid. For all those grids, it's possible to uh, change some settings. So there's the size of the grid, um, doo -doo -doo, and the size of each tile on the grid and also the location of the grid itself. Once we have a basic grid generated, we're going to be able to modify it. So I'm just going to activate that for now. And then we can see that we can remove some tiles, add other tiles here and there. Uh, we can change the height of each of these tiles and we can make them lower also. And we can also change the tile types of all those tiles if we want. So we have some tiles that cost double, triple, uh, some tiles that are only walkable by flying units, and we also have some obstacle. But it will also be possible to generate the grid based on the environment. So I'm just going to disable that and I'm going to show uh, my starting environment I had at the beginning. So let's say here. So we can see that my grid is aligned to the whole environment. And if I toggle the mode tactical, I can see that my obstacles are all there and same thing for the flying units. Then we can also go take a look at all the other levels. So let's say here I have my hexagon square that does the same exact thing. So if I show my tactical grid, it also works pretty well. And same thing for the triangle. So I'm just gonna show the triangle here just to show you and see that we have our big triangle map. Once we're done with the grid, we're going to go uh, with the pathfinding. So I'm just going to toggle all these uh, back. Uh, here we go. And then we can go to the pathfinding tab. For the pathfinding, we're going to use the A star algorithm. And we can see here that if I select a tile, we can see all the reachables and also the path that I can generate from the start tile to the target tile. I can increase the range at which I can move. And I can also, if I just bring that down, I can include the diagonal. So my path can also work diagonally. We can also see that the path is going to work around obstacles. So let's say I can uh, generate a few obstacles here and there. Then if I go back to my path, I can select a starting tile here. And we can see that it can only uh, walk to those tiles here. And if I increase my range of movement, you can see that uh, the path is going around all these obstacles. And the same thing applies for units. So we can add, let's say, a chicken on the grid, and then we can ask him to move. So the chicken's just gonna be able to walk around all these red tiles. Once we're done with the pathfinding, we're gonna make our way through the spells. So I'm just gonna reset my grid here so it's easier to see. And in the spells, we can see that we have some patterns. I have my diamond patterns, that is a basic diamond. I have a star, a square, and a few lines, so diagonals and lines. For all those patterns, we can adjust the range so it can go further or closer to you. And we can also create any custom range pattern that we want. Here I have a couple of spells that are already made, so I can have like my sword here that can just hit in front of him. I can throw a sword in front of me, I can throw some arrows, uh, some other arrows here. I have a bunch of feelings, uh, a few wind gusts, uh, and a bunch of slime balls here that I can throw. 
for all those spells we can see all the characteristics the damage the range the crit chance the cost for the spell if it requires the line of sight the healing and pretty much everything we need to design all our spells and i have like a bunch of them that are not visually designed but that are functionally done so once we're done with all those building blocks, we're going to go through the last step, which is the combat logic. So here to just show you real quick, I'm just going to add a warrior on the grid that is going to be my unit. And I'm going to add a chicken that is going to be in another team, which is going to be controlled by an AI. So here's my chicken. I'm just going to stop the combat. So I'm starting first. So I'm just going to move here and attack the chicken. Now my turn is done, so I'm just going to click enter normally. And then the chicken, we can see it move by itself. The AI is going to be a pretty simple one. So it's just move here, move there, run away, attack, run away again. I don't know. So it's just basic logic, but it's going to be good enough for this tutorial, I think. So we can see the chicken came, attacked me and run away. Now the chicken is close enough so I can just come and kill it. So yeah, my team won. And just like that, we have everything we need to make our own game. So I can just go back in the main menu to show you real quick. I have a few scenarios that are already made. So let's say if I load chicken hunt, I'm just going to start into a combat. Here we go. I control two rangers right now with a bunch of chickens on the opposite team. So we can see all their stats, where they can move and uh, what kind of action they might do. Um, so now I'm just going to move and just end my turn to see what they do. So we can see like a chicken coming and is going to come and attack me. While the chickens are playing or while I'm playing also, we can enable the tactical grid if you want to have a better overview of what is happening, like what is the grid and not the environment around us. And we can turn it off if we want. Now it's my turn. I can just move and attack the chicken. And then my turn is done, so enter. And that's pretty much it. So now the chicken is going to continue attacking me. Yay! <laughs> anyway, so that concludes the overview of the whole series. We're going to start working on it in the next video, which should be pretty soon. And I hope you're going to like it. But that's it for now. So bye-bye!